I think it's pronounced Crew 90. So this is uh, Officer Chris Barrett. Uh, he worked with the uh, police department. It was the Orange County Sheriff's Department, correct? Correct. Yep. And uh, he was actually the first responding officer who found me. So a lot of the comments that I'm reading say stuff to the effect of how did it take them so long to find you or were you out in the middle of nowhere because it seems like it was a while for anybody to locate you. I would like to actually let Chris explain. Um, apparently, Chris actually found the location relatively quickly, but what what exactly was it that happened? Uh, well, when I had first pulled in, um, there was a lot of confusion because it is an industrial area. Uh, when I pulled in, there was people working, there was uh, people on tractors, and uh, we would think if there was some kind of event that was going on, uh, like there was, that somebody would have flagged us down or something, and I all the lights going on on my cruiser, so people knew that there was some kind of emergency. They just didn't realize it was there, I guess, because, uh, like I said, I drove in, I looked around, I saw the giant baler, but we weren't even sure if that was still the right air, uh, the right place. And when nobody flagged me down as I was driving around, we just figured that wasn't it. The fire department pulled in and pulled out, and nobody came up and flagged me down, because uh, nobody knew right away. I ended up just pulling out also. Yeah, so who you would have seen would have been my two co-workers at the time, which was David and Richie. And uh, yeah, they were the ones that I referred to on the 911 call when I asked if anybody else had called in. And it turns out that they were completely unaware anything was even going on. So uh, what was it exactly that made you ultimately come back and uh, decide to just reinvestigate the area? I remember pulling out. I was out there for maybe like a minute and a half listening to what was going on on the radio. And somebody had said something about the, the, a baler or something that was blue and obviously the baler the thing the thing's enormous so i just turned back around and went back in and still this time there was nobody flagging me down or anything like that um so basically what i just did is i just looked for what i could think would be maybe a control panel where there could be maybe somebody in there and i could say hey where does john normally work on this part of the machine um and i found what was the uh control panel and walked up the stairs and there you were on the ground now, what was going through your mind when you finally actually located me? It was more of a relief than anything because, it, as you know, there was a lot of uh, a lot of confusion about where you were and everything. I don't know if it was your side or their side. I mean, I've, I've listened to the video before uh, also, and I know something it, it kind of gets a little difficult to understand or hear what you're saying. Um, but when I first got up there, to me, it was, like I said, it was more of a relief that we had found you and that you were still alive. But the biggest thing for me was that you had done pretty much all the medical work by yourself, which was kind of amazing. Uh, you were sitting up, you had your, you were holding your leg up with your hand, and you had already put a tourniquet on, uh, so the bleeding had stopped. So basically my job was just to sit there, and I'm sure you can probably hear in the, uh, the recording, uh, I just keep talking to you until the fire department gets there and then let them take over. <laughs> at that point, I remember I was very delirious, and I was trying to talk to you, and I was also trying to talk to Jeff at the same time. And that led to um, some humorous parts of the 911 call, if you, if you want to even call it humorous. But uh, where I, I remember Jeff was asking me questions, and you were asking me questions, and I was just answering everybody at the same time. I definitely remember when you opened up the door and you saw me, I was very relieved to see you. And then immediately I turned to, uh-oh, that's not a firefighter, that's a police officer. Am I going yeah. to jail? <laughs> and uh, I remember that was no, one of the yeah, first that's things. that's one of the things you actually asked, too. You can hear it in the video because uh, I remember when I first went up there, I said to you, uh, why would you go to jail? I, I, I think the most surprising thing to me out of the whole thing was that when I went up there, it was just like I was talking to you like a person. You weren't frantic. You weren't screaming. We were just talking basically back and forth. You just had obviously the nervous tone. Uh, you were more afraid of getting in trouble than you were of having your leg amputated, which I had noticed. Because you kept asking me, am I going to get in trouble? And I said, dude, there's you're not going to get in trouble for something like this. I mean, accidents happen. Um, so that was really the thing that surprised me the most is that you were as calm as you were, and you were able to do the uh, things that were necessary to keep yourself alive, which a lot of people, when they get in a situation like that, they start freaking out. They don't even think about it, and then they end up passing on because they didn't do the basics. You needed the basics. You put a tourniquet on, and yeah, that's exactly what you needed to do. And honestly, that's what saved your life.
you were able to keep calm by yourself, and uh, it worked. It was, I mean, you were, the, you were the real hero there. It wasn't anybody else. I mean, you're the one who kept yourself alive. You did great. Well, I appreciate that. You know that I definitely consider you and Jeff and uh, Carol, definitely I consider you guys my heroes. Um, in my 911 call, you can hear me telling Jeff that I was going to send everyone flowers. And uh, after talking to Jeff, I actually only very recently, this entire time I thought I sent everyone flowers, but I only just recently found out I never did send those flowers. So, um, <laughs> but I, 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 I know that talking to you over the years, though, I have it definitely let you know that um, I definitely consider you my hero. And I know my mom has told you that numerous times. So, um, and, and, and it's true, but I mean, I... I personally don't feel, I mean, I'll be, I'd be humble about things like this. I, mean, I just don't feel like I should be rewarded for a job that, that basically I chose. I've been doing it for over 20 years. And if I can just change one person's life each day, and that was your day that day, I mean, that makes the whole job worth it. All the bad stuff that we go through, you just totally forget about it. Right. Now, one of the other things where you definitely you did more than you were just required to do is I remember you accompanied uh, you accompanied me to the hospital and seeing as you were the only face I recognized I pretty much latched onto you and I asked you not to leave my side and you stayed with me until I went into surgery then you I do remember that yeah okay then from there you returned and you did the remainder of your entire shift and then still turned around and came back and you waited until I came out of surgery so that you could see me in the hospital and uh, that that is incredible right there. Well, you know, it, it, to me, it's about follow-up also. We don't just go out there, you, you help somebody, you never see them again. I'm the kind of person that, if we go to a situation like this, um, I, I want to be there for the person. Uh, obviously, your family wasn't there right away, so you need to see somebody that's going to be there, and if you need somebody to talk to, uh, as long as the hospital was willing to let me stand, uh, stand there and talk to you, I would have stayed all night because it's always the follow-through also. Um, that I think it helps to start the whole healing process is when you can talk to somebody that was with you in that situation. Right. Well, definitely that was a that was a big benefit to me just to have somebody that even if I'd only known you for 20, 30 minutes prior, at least was somewhat familiar. Well, Chris, thank you so much for the uh, for the call and thank you for answering the questions. I appreciate it. So. Not a problem. I'm always glad to help. Like I said, if you need anything else, you got my number. If you just want to text, if you want to call, my phone's always on, bro. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah.